Having this good news that Ilhan Omar is the uh, first female legislature of Somali origin in the state, and they hope that she can play a significant part in changing that narrative. You also know that the Somali community in Minnesota and the Muslim community in general have been under intense scrutiny from the law enforcement agencies because of the number of young men who traveled to Somalia and to Syria who joined the extremist groups. Just in November, we had nine uh, young men, eight of them Somalis, who were convicted and sentenced by a court in Minnesota from two and a half years to 35 year prison term. So that was a negative publicity for the community. They hope this election will smoothen that. They hope this election will show another side of the Somali community. Ilhan Umar might be the first female elected legislature, state legislature in Minnesota, but she is the third Somali to, to be elected in an elected position in Minnesota. We have a, a city um, councillor. We have also a member of the school board in Minnesota. So Somalis have been making a significant progress in terms of integrating, in terms of contributing to the political discourse. We also have up to 10 police officers in the state. So it's not just, as you rightly put it, it's not just gloom. There are also a lot of positive activities taking place. Mm. And I expect that, uh, of course, uh, there'll be a lot of hope in the immigrant community, especially amongst women. So, Haran, talk to us about some of the conversations that have resulted from Omar's win. The conversation is that, really, for the first time, not only women, but also Somalis in general and Muslims, they believe they can win, they believe they can compete. What's also more interesting is that Ilhan Omar did not get the majority of the vote of the Somali community in Minneapolis, in her area. She actually built an alliance of Somalis, uh, other white communities, other Afri uh, African-American communities. She built a wide alliance who gave her the support, who took her over the line. Uh, there was another challenger who won the majority of the Somali vote. That's very important to note that most of the people who elected Ilhan Omar were not Somalis. They were Amer other American uh, American citizens. So mm -hmm. that's a very good uh, positive sign that somebody can go out of their community, out of their comfort zone and build an alliance and win an election. Haran Maruf, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. appreciate um, uh, your being with us today. Well, Angolan lawyers uh, challenging the legality of the president's appointment of his daughter as chief executive of the state oil company have applied for their case to be heard in the Constitutional Court. A Supreme Court last month rejected an application by 12 human rights lawyers which sought to have Isabel dos Santos removed as uh, head of Sonango, which handles a country's vast oil and gas resources. President Jose Eduardo dos Santos in June 2016 appointed his 43-year-old billionaire daughter to the post. Lawyers have accused the president of nepotism, but Isabel dos Santos, who is ranked Africa's richest woman by Forbes magazine, says she was given the job because of her business acumen. The 74-year-old president has been in power since 1979. He has said he will step down in 2018. Well, Nigerians in the diaspora say they are optimistic that 2017 will present more opportunities to succeed in the United States, even as the country prepares for President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration. In the special report, our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Ayotunde Balogun, visited a Nigerian family in Maryland to look at the past year and their expectations for this year. Twenty seventeen is here, and people in the US are already looking forward to a year of fulfillment and possibilities, including Nigerians in the diaspora. So this is Lakeshore Drive in Bowie, Maryland of the United States, and you can see it's pretty much of a quiet suburb, not too far from the capital, Washington DC. Now I'm at the residence of the Akiode family, Nigerians who are, are already residing here, and I'm gonna be going in 
right about now to find out how the year 2016 has been for the family and of course what their expectations are for the year 2017. So come along with me. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Aziza Akiyodi, nice to meet you. I attend the Balakum from Channels TV. The Akiyodi family hail from Undo town in Undo state, along with other close relatives who also live with them. Both Mr. Akiyodi and wife, Mrs. Aziza, work in the financial sector in Washington, D.C. and Maryland. And they shared their experience in 2016. Financially, you know, I made some very wrong decisions in times past which kind of affected us like the earlier part of 2016. By the end of the first quarter of 2016, everything got better. Like my finance, our finances got better. You know, my vision for life, for the future, for my family got uh, clearer to me. They spoke about the emergence of Republican Mr. I Donald Trump as the next U.S. president. The funny thing about it is, I mean, she knows and a um, few of my friends know, um, I got an offer from, um, what's it called, um, RNC, you know, um, to come have a meeting with them because I work right there at Capitol Hill. And then, um, you know, to come work with them and see how, you know, an African can be part of the team. But, I mean, I like Donald Trump, no doubt, as a businessman. But um, I wasn't expecting Donald Trump to win. What are the expectations of the Aquino days for 2017? I'm in graduate school now. I will be complete within the first quarter of 2017. So mentally preparing myself for that final semester. Um, as far as the family, um, you know, just looking forward to some vacations and um, getting ready to plan that because that's something that we really did not do for the past few years. So we want to make sure that we get ready. It's been a remarkable time for the Akinode family in the United States. And as they look forward to achieving all their set goals in 2017, Nigerians in the diaspora say they are confident of achieving all their set goals in 2017. Ayotunde Balogun, Channels Television News. We'll be having more on those expectations a bit later out of the break, but still ahead also. New Year celebrations continue in South Africa. We'll be joining the Revelers when we return.